Lesson 8, I will identify and measure angles as terms. So we've been talking about measuring and drawing angles using a protractor, and we've been measuring angles using degrees. Well, today we're going to talk about when you measure an angle as a turn. I'm going to show you a little bit more about what that means. You're not going to need your math journal today. Actually, what you're going to need is that clock um, template that was in your problem set. So once you find that, it's going to look... Um, like this, it's just a clock template, and I want you to go ahead and cut out the clock. All right, then I want you to, you're also going to need a ruler, so cut out your clock and get a ruler and then come back. All right, so take your ruler and use it as a straight edge, and I want you to draw a line from the tick mark at 12 and the tick mark to 6, and then I want you to fold along the line that you just drew. All right, when you fold along that line, what fractional units have you just created? If you look at the clock as a fraction, what have you just created? Well, you could say that this is half, right? This is half, and this is half. So you've created two halves. Now I want you to fold your clock in half again, and I want you to trace and fold across the second line. So now you should have a line going from 12 to 6, and a line that's going from 3 to 9. Now what fraction have you created? You no longer have one halves, now you have one-fourth. All of these would be considered one-fourth. Well, another word for one-fourth is also called one-quarter. And you can think of this, this relates to money, because if this clock were a dollar, and you divided a dollar into four parts, each part would be 25 cents or one-quarter. So one-fourth is also known as one-quarter. Okay, now I want you to take your finger and I want you to trace along that clock for just a second. So I want you to take your finger and I want you to trace from 12 to 3. Okay, so you're going to go 12 to 3. Think of this as an angle. Think about this angle right here. Okay, you just moved from here to here. How many degrees did you just move or what fraction did you just move? You just moved one-fourth or one-quarter of the clock, and you just moved 90 degrees. If you did the same thing, trace from 3 to 6, how much of the circle or the clock did you move? You just moved, again, another quarter, and this is also 90 degrees. If you take your finger and you traced from the 6 to the 9, what fraction did you just move? You just moved one-fourth or one-quarter, and you just moved another 90 degrees. If you went from 9 to 12, you would move another quarter, and you would have moved another 90 degrees. Okay, so I want you to think about that for just a minute. What if you moved from 12 to 6? Think about this angle. Now you didn't move one quarter of the clock, you moved one half of the clock. But how many degrees did you move? You moved from 12 to 6. How many degrees would this angle be? Well, it's 90 and 90, so it's like a straight angle. It would be 180 degrees. Now, what if you started at the 12 and you went all the way to the 9 like this. This time you went a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter, which would be three quarters or three fourths of the way around the clock. And how many degrees would that be? It would be 90, 90, and 90. That would be 180 plus 90, which is 270 degrees. But what if I bet you can tell what's coming. I'm following a pattern here. What if you started at the 12 and you went all the way around? You went to the 12, the 3, the 6, the 9, and you didn't stop until you got back to where you went. So you went one full circle, one whole circle. How many degrees would that be? 90 and 90, 90 and 90, or 180 and 180. That would be a total of 360 degrees. That's how many degrees are in a full turn or a full circle, okay? All right, so let's think about this in another term for a minute, okay? I want you to get your pencil, 
any pencil, and I want you to lay your pencil exactly like I have mine. I want the eraser pointing away from you and the lead pointing towards you, okay? So let's pretend that the middle of this circle is like the middle of that clock. What if you took this clock and you did a one quarter turn to the right? That would look like this. You turn to the pencil one quarter to the right, or we could also say clockwise. That's a one quarter turn clockwise. What if you went and turned another quarter of the way? Now you have made a half turn clockwise, okay? Put your pencil back to where it was, okay? What if I said, turn your pencil 180 degrees clockwise? Well, this would be 90, and then if you kept going, this would be 180 degrees. You may have heard of this before. Maybe you've heard of a skateboarder or a BMX bike racer doing a 180. What does that mean if they do a 180? Well, it means that they're facing one direction and then they completely turn the opposite direction. Okay? All right, so let's go back to our original position. All right, what if you did a 360? 360. Remember, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if you did a 360, you would go all the way around and all the way back to where you started. That would be a 360 degree turn. So remember our objective today is to talk about turns or to measure angles in terms of a turn. So we would say that this is a one quarter turn or a 90 degree turn. If you went another quarter, that's a half turn or a 180 degree turn. If you went another quarter, you would say that that is a three quarter turn or 270 degrees. And if you made one full turn, you would make a 360 degree turn. Now that's a lot to remember at one time, so don't be frustrated if you don't understand all of that completely. We're gonna practice some of that in our problem set. Hopefully by the time you get ready for your echo slip, you'll be fully, completely understand. All right, so let's do a little bit of practice. All right, so here's your problem set. I want you to go ahead and put your name at the top and let's take a look by reading the directions of number one. Joe, Steve, and Bob stood in the middle of the yard and faced the house. Okay, so here's the, here's the yard, and just pretend that they're standing right here and they're facing the house. That means they're looking right towards the house. Joe turned 90 degrees to the right. Steve turned 180 degrees to the right, and Bob turned 270 degrees to the right. To what was each boy now facing? I want you to think about what we just did and just kind of make a guess. Okay, first of all, pretend you're Joe. All right, so you're Joe and you're standing right here and you make a 90 degree turn to the right. So think about which way is right. Okay, so you're facing the house and you make a 90 degree turn to the right. So if you were Joe and you turned 90 degrees, you would now be facing the fence. So let's put fence here. All right, see if you can figure out what Steve would be facing if he, again, is facing the house and he makes a 180 degree turn to the right. Okay, so this is a 90 degree turn. You can tell because it's a right angle. So he faces the fence. That means a 90 degree turn. And then, but he goes 180 degrees. So he has to go another 90 degrees. So now Steve is facing the tree. All right, see if you can figure out where Bob was facing. He starts by facing the house and he turns 207 degrees. So he's gonna turn 90 degrees and be facing the fence. Turn 90 degrees more, he's facing the tree. Now he's gone 180 degrees. He's going to go 90 degrees more, and now he is facing the barn. Okay, all right, let's take a look at number two. Monique looked at the clock at the beginning of class and at the end of class. How many degrees did the minute hand turn from the beginning of class until the end? Take a look at this clock, and you can kind of see, you know how a clock works. And the hour hand is going to move as the minute hand has moved, but you can see that it has not gone to the next hour because it's 11 o'clock here, and here it's 11.45. So it hasn't, made a, it hasn't gone all the way around. It's only gone part of the way around. So when you think about how many degrees did this minute hand go if it started here and it went past the 3, past the 6, and past the 9? You can look back at the last problem to see if you can figure out how many degrees. Were you thinking this? 270 degrees because the clock hand moved three quarters of the way around the clock, which is 270 degrees, right? 
The skater jumped into the air and did a 360. What does that mean? So think about what we just said just a minute ago, 360 degrees. How does that relate to a circle and a turn? Well, hopefully you said that if a skater jumped into the air and did a 360, that means that the skater jumped in the air, well, good grief, and made a full turn. Okay, so what I mean by that is if the skater was facing me, he jumped in the air and turned all the way around so that he was still facing me before he came back to the ground. All right, see if you can do number four by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video and then come back and let's check it together. Martin drove away from his house without his wallet. He did a 180. Where is he headed now? So he drives away from his house and then he does a 180. So if he does a 180, that means that he's going to make a, not just a 90 degree turn, he's going to make a full 180 degree turn. So that means that now he is headed back to his house. Where is he headed now? So I would say Mr. Martin is headed back to his house. Hopefully this is starting to make a little bit more sense to you now. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. John turned the knob of the shower 270 degrees to the right. Draw a picture showing the position of the knob after he turned it. Pause the video and see if you can draw the knob where you think it would go and then come back and let's check it and see if we agree. All right, so if the knob starts to face this way, that would be a 90 degree turn. And then if it faced this way, that would be 180 degrees. But then if it faced this way, that would be another 90 degrees, which would be 270 degrees. So the correct answer would be to draw the knob facing here, and that would be a 270 degree turn. Barb used her scissors to cut out a coupon from the newspaper. How many quarter turns did she need to turn the paper in order to stay on the lines? All right, so see if you can figure that out and then come back. All right, well, she's cutting, right? So she starts off cutting this way, and then she's going to make one turn here, and then she's going to make another turn here, and then she's going to need to make another turn here, and then she'll be back here. So if she went all the way around, she would end up with four quarter turns. So, Because if her scissors are here, she'd have to turn it this way. So that'd be one, two, three, four. So she would need to make four quarter turns to make a full circle. All right? How many quarter turns does the picture need to be rotated in order for it to be upright? Hmm. Well, depends on which way you turn it. You could have said that you could turn the page once this way, one quarter turn this way, and that would make it upright. But if you turned it this way, you would have to make three quarter turns because when you turn it this way, it'd be upside down. And then you turn it again, it would be facing this way. And then you'd have to turn it this way. So that would be one, two, three. So I would say, I would take either. I would say you could say one quarter turn or you could say three. Depends on which way you turn it. Because if you turn the paper this way, then you would have to turn it three times. But if you turned it once to the left, you would only have to turn it once. All right, see if you can read number eight all by yourself and then come back and let's check it together and see if you have it correct. Meredith faced north. She turned 90 degrees to the right and then 180 degrees more. What direction was she now facing? Okay, so she's facing north and then she makes a 90 degree turn. So that 90 degree turn would make her facing east. I'm gonna change the color here so we can see this a little better. All right, so she makes a 90 degree turn. All right, then it says she turns 180 degrees more. So this would be 90 and another 180 degrees. So now she is facing west. So I'm gonna type this because I could type a little bit faster than I can write, looks a little bit neater. So I would say Meredith is facing west. Okay, so hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of how you can measure turns um, measure angles using turns. If you get confused, you can always look back at your problem set and go back and look at your clock and think about which way would be 9 degrees. Think of them as right angles and that will help you with the degrees.